Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to yet again another fantastic indie creator interview. It's your KPR Sarah Cody, and we're keeping it geekly with our new guest, Tommy Halls. We're here to break down Kingsville and everything in between. But before we dive into that, Tommy, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream today, man. Hey, man, it's a pleasure to be with you, Cody. Can't wait to dig in. Um, just very appreciative, my friend. Yeah, after, and I'm always appreciative of, of creators that want to come on uh, and talk about their book. I had the opportunity. You gave me a free copy of this, and I was just so just like thrown back by just i love violence i love violence <laughs> in comics and i just love because i wasn't expecting it um and the way you twisted into the story was just like chef kiss but tommy <laughs> before we get into that let's start with the basics of who you are and how you got into creating this book yeah so i mean i've been a comic fan like probably most of your audience for a very long time um, remember riding my bike to my local comic book store with uh, a couple of dollars that my mom would uh, allow me to have. And uh, back then, comics were about 50 cents. So you could walk out with like three, you know, with taxes and everything. So, I'd, yeah, I mean, I, I've loved comics for a long time. Um, been in the grocery industry for almost 30 years. So, uh, yeah, haven't ever been able to uh, create my own comic, but it's always been a dream. And last year, I actually had a kidney transplant and I uh, had a lot of time off. And during that time, I was talking to my wife. I'm like, man, I have this story for a comic book. Um, I would love to test the waters with it and see if I can't create it. And my wife's like, well, now's probably the best time ever. So I started putting it down on paper, um, went on Reddit and was starting to interview different artists. And I found Daniel, who is amazing. Daniel Zay, who is the artist. He does everything, by the way. I mean, he does the penciling, he does the inking, he does the, so it takes a little bit longer because it's just him, but man, he is really amazing. Um, and so we started putting the story on paper. I, I have about six issues written already wow. and we were able to pump out issue six. You know, I was off for six months. So I had a lot of time either watching Netflix or, uh, All that in six the months, Tommy. Yeah. 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 It's the longest vacation I've ever had in my life. It's like, it's like the 50 forth. years of experience with like, was just like held behind by a dam. And it's like, as soon as you <laughs> got that little hole, just yeah, that's pretty much what it was. But yeah, man, that, that Kingsville story has been in the back of my mind for probably about, uh, I don't know, five or six years. And mm -hmm. uh, I was able to put it on paper. And man, Daniel did a great job on the art side of it, really bringing the story. Because, you, know, you know, working with your artists, it's, it's a dance, right? And if you're not on the same link, you know, you might be trying to tell one story, but maybe the art's saying something different. And then it makes it a little confusing. I thought Daniel took the story and and really made it come alive so really really proud of him and happy to be partnering with him he's a young guy about 23 years old but uh, i think he has a lot of talent and i think he's gonna be doing this for a long time i mean lettering in itself is an art and you're not only the writer of this but the letterer as well if i'm not mistaken yeah as my first uh, try as a, a letterer so i've never done that before um my local comic book store it's a uh, diggers comics and more um ambrose is the owner and he's been uh doing uh he does more cartoonist type stuff but he has written some comic books himself and he was a lot of help so shout out to uh diggers comics out here in hemet um you know I, I sent him copies and he did some editing for me for free and and then he said man your your lettering looks like crap here's what you need to do and <laughs> there's a lot of back and forth and uh he really helped me out a lot so i feel like i'm a much better letterer but uh yeah you know it's it's not cheap creating your own comic mm -hmm. book so you know, I was trying to do it the the least expensive way possible and lettering yourself is one way to, to try and do it. So I was able to knock it out and I think it came out all right. Yeah, yeah, I, and maybe it's because, you know, he pulled you straight. You know, I think that's a big thing, you know, is being able to tell someone like, hey, this, you could do better. That's a hard thing to do. You don't wanna hurt anyone's feelings, but you know, a lot of times when, you know, creators go that route where they do the lettering themselves. It, it sometimes it's hit or miss. And I think you really knocked it out of the park with this. I mean, did you take like special classes or were you just persistent and just getting better? Yeah, I mean, YouTube, right? So yeah. going on YouTube, looking at other, um, you know, letters or artists that do their own lettering and just watching and listening, um, utilizing the same uh, formats. And then obviously Ambrose over at our local comic book store, he's been doing lettering for different comics for a while too. And he sat me down and showed me some little tricks of the trade. So yeah, it was a lot of back and forth. Uh, 
Um, he's, he's brutally honest, um, which I love, right. You need that. So, you know, especially going in your first time. And if you think you know what you're doing, you're, you're probably wrong already. (laughs) So I I went there and he's like, yeah, you should do this. And I would not do that. And, you know, I I would change how you wrote this and it sounds too mechanic and you should probably put a little bit more thought on. And I think I can still get better with that too. So, you you know, your first comic's never going to be perfect. I know there's a lot to uh, grow on and I think issue two is just going to get better. And, and hopefully, uh, you know, by issue four or five, right? I'm rocking and rolling and it's making a lot of sense. And yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. I mean, that's the goal is to get to at least issue six um, over the the first year mm-hmm. and, and see where it goes from there. So we got Mama Geekly. Thank you for stopping in, Mama. Uh, saying some awesome drawings. And how are you doing health-wise? Prayers for you. I mean, holy crap, uh, a kidney transplant? That had to have been like your, 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 you know, your do or don't moment, right? Like you're like, if I'm, if any time to do this is now, like... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I work for a uh, an avocado oil company um, in San Diego. We work a lot of hours, right? So um, at the time, I was the chief sales officer. I was leading everything sales. I've since moved into a new position, but uh, you know, you're working 60, 70 hours a week, traveling 50% of the time. Yeah, the comic wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Um, but then uh, I was born with a hip disease, so I've had quite a few surgeries over the, you know, the since I was seven and. Uh, it turned out that, uh, I won't get into it, but you know, it turned out that I needed a kidney after all the surgeries and the medications that I was on and some of the different stuff that went on. So I was on dialysis for a couple of years. Um, I was able to do it from home, thankfully. So I was able to travel and do my dial- dialysis in the hotel and whatnot. Um, and then a, ki- a kidney became available. So, you know, when those type of things happen, you have seconds to make your decision and then you got to head to the hospital. So I, I guess that's a good way to to get a transplant is not knowing when it's going to happen because when it happens you can't think about it you just got to do it yeah um and then all of a sudden you wake up and you got a new kidney and you're off for six months right because you got to recuperate um so that slowed everything in my life down which was great my wife and i um lived in san diego for about six weeks after because that's one of the things you got to do and during that time I just put paper to or pencil to paper and and put out the story and uh man everything's been good thank you for your prayers and thank you for your thoughts um everything's working out really well um from a health standpoint um and uh not only that i had that blessing but i was able to uh create our first comic so that was a lot of fun Dude, and in my new shoot. position i'm traveling less so i'm able to spend more time on uh, issue two so yeah it all worked out man you know things That's... happen in life and you just got to take advantage when they do right a scary thing though dude i can't even put myself in that mindset i mean so did you channel any of that like into kingsville like any like any of that like that you were just going through at that moment yeah I, not really i don't think i did i mean maybe without thinking there's probably some things in there i i, I do think as we move forward um some of that will be in there at least the emotional um side of it um Mm -hmm. you know life changing i mean we all go through life changing changing experiences right um and when you go through them right they do have an impact on you and if you're a writer you're a singer you're any any kind of artistic thing that you're doing i do think some of those things come forward whether you mean to or not and Mm -hmm. uh certainly i think in kingsville something of what i went through will come through um, but I can't really pinpoint anything off the top of my head, but I'm sure probably someone else that's a little bit more objective will probably see it, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I didn't see it. You know what I mean? So let's get, let's get talking about Kingsville. So on the cover, we have this big brooding guy covered yeah. in blood. Who's this guy? Like what, what's his story? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, one of the things that I'd like to do after we have a, a few issues of Kingsville is to really go into, um, you know, maybe write some stories. I have some backgrounds of a couple of our uh, leads um, within the comic and that big guy, his name is Collapse. Um, and, uh, you know, his background is, he's gone through a lot throughout life, right? Um, he's always been kind of an overweight, kind of a big guy, um, grew up in a really broken family, um, but was always very strong. And what uh, the Alliance for Global Safety does is that they look for, you know, certain people that uh, already have a lot of uh, strengths that they could utilize for their their own needs and then they put them through this program where they receive this drug um, that uh, gives them superpowers. so he was already quite a brute by the time ags finds him um and they give him this drug and it just you know it it creates superpowers and and then he gains this ability and his ability is he could collapse into like a pool of water 
Um, so he's this big giant guy. And whenever he wants, he collapsed and he could go up walls. He could kind of go under doors. He could do all these different things. That's scary. Yeah, it's very scary. And then <laughs> come back to form, right? He could come up with an uppercut. He could do all these different things and he could just take your head off because of his strength. He's already yes. the largest of the super um, humans that uh, AGS has produced. And uh, yeah, he's a scary individual. And he has all this emotional baggage that you'll start to see come forth in issues two forward um, that really we didn't have time for in issue one um, to get into. We wanted to kind of show what AGS is, you know, outwardly, right? They're this, mm -hmm. um, you know, I kind of compare them to the like the World Economic Forum, right? They're these unelected officials um, that you know, on the outside want to do a lot of good. And, and I'm not saying the World Economic Forum doesn't do a lot of good. I don't want to get political. But what if on the outside they're saying they're doing good, but internally they're doing all these things just to benefit themselves? And that's what AGS is, right? On the outside, they're gaining all these nations that want to be part of AGS to take advantage of, you know, trade deals, take advantage of, you know, maybe uh, one nation has, uh, you know, fuel, um and becoming part of that nation maybe they get a little bit better deal mm -hmm. like all these different things are happening as ags tries to gain more nations into um their ags forum um and one of the benefits of becoming part of ags is you get your own superhuman that will help within your nation you know stop crime do all these different things that they're supposed to do but internally right ags is out there utilizing them for their own benefit as well and you probably saw that mm -hmm. uh, as you get to like page i think 11 or 12 um when uh you know you have these people starting to rise up because they're saying look i don't think ags is everything that they say they are well ags needs to squash those kind of uh uprisings literally and though like supers to do that right literally one of my favorite scenes we're talking backstage like when collapse takes his hands and just smashes a dude's head i was yeah. like dude this shit just got real yeah, fast got real, real, uh, yeah. and uh you know we have another person on uh i th maybe the cover is it cover b or the variant cover yeah, uh, and he uh, that was uh, he he was with collapse. So get, let's talk a little bit about that guy because he's just as evil. Like, damn, dude. Yeah, yeah. So his his background. So this is snapback. His background is much different than collapse. Right. He he was kind of a uh, you know a popular person growing up. You know, mm -hmm. uh, into sports. Always like the the lead. Right. The head guy on any sport that he was part of. Very arrogant. Um, and because of that uh, arrogance and uh, his ability to kind of take lead. He is the leader of all the superhumans at AGS. So um, Snapback, his ability once he received that drug is, uh, you know, he could stretch his arms and legs, um, you know, maybe 10, 15, 20 feet. Um, and so what he did to make that even more evil is he has these shoulder pads that come to a point and mm -hmm. he wears them on his shoulder. And whenever he gets into a situation where he needs to, uh, you know, squash a rebellion or maybe take out a person, he could take off those shoulder pads, put them on his hands. And as he shoots his arms forward, they snap back. But if he has one of those on and they come to a point, he could just put his arm right through you and pull it right back and you're done. So his his name is Snapback because of that ability. And he is the leader of the superhumans um, at uh, the Alliance of Global Safety. So him and Collapse are utilized to squash um, a rebellion that or an uprising that's taking place in the the nation of Nabel, where it actually collapses from, and that's that scene that you're talking about. Those yeah. two come together, and they make sure that they squash that right away. And you'll see an issue too how they kind of uh, get away with it. Well, I mean, I, I, I'm left curious though because there was one person. Yes. Uh, th but uh, I, I just loved Snapback right away. He's like, "Oh, you must be there." Whoosh, just takes yeah. dudes. I was like. Dude, these guys, and I love how you just get straight to the action. Now, Snapback and Collapse, uh, you know, they seem kind of like the antagonist, but I really, really enjoyed uh, the other two characters, uh, Rodrigo and Marissa. Uh, we were talking backstage as well. This kind of seemed, they, they seem like your catalyst for how you're able to really build the exposition without dumping it onto the readers, uh, and how you're able to really question if the Alliance for Global Safety is good or bad. You know, for me, it felt like the the a, uh, AGS was kind of like a play on the UN, like how the yeah, UN's yeah. always trying to do, uh, and sometimes some of the, the stuff, you know, they've been called out for is rather devious. So I really liked how, like, it felt like a lot of like real life influences were like created yeah. in this world for sure i mean there's a lot of influences um and obviously i'm taking it to a much greater level from uh, a corruption and evil standpoint but uh yeah i mean marissa and rodrigo 
Um, they're both extremely intelligent. They were, you know, very top of their class. And that's why they, they lead the science department at AGS. Um, they both really want to do the right thing. Um, you know, Marissa, um, you know, she is probably uh, a little bit more oblivious to what maybe is going on outside of the four walls of the building that she works in. Um, Rodrigo is starting to see things. So he's starting to question things. Mm -hmm. um, they're very close. Um, so, you know, they work constantly. They, they do uh, go out once in a while together. There's no relationship there, um, but uh, they are very close because they do run the science department together. And you're starting to see like little cracks in the wall. And Rodrigo's like, Marissa, look, I I'm not sure things are the way we think they are. And Marissa's like, look, man, uh, they've done a lot in my community. A and they do. They do a lot of good, right? Because they, they have to have that blend. But uh, Rodrigo's starting to see things. And so he's he's questioning a lot of things, which is very dangerous to do, especially if you work for AGS. And I think she's starting to get a little nervous that he's asking so many questions. Um, and also, you know, some of the folks at AGS are starting to notice that he's not maybe partnering the way that they would like him to partner. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, we're, we're kind of in a weird situation. Um, you know, he doesn't want to do anything too crazy, um, but he does want to see what Marissa's thoughts are of what uh, he's seeing and seeing if she's seeing the same things. Now, Tommy, this world feels so like in depth and your world building is just so immersive i gotta ask are super humans like are those naturally born in this world or is it all just mined from that special element uh that was mentioned in the story yeah it, it's all mined from that special element and the and the reason and we really didn't get into kingsville too much we did speak about it a little bit but there is a a unique unique uh mineral that is found on the island of kingsville um, and it's called Psychodone. Yep. Um, and Rodrigo and Marissa, um, because of their abilities, were able to take this mineral and create a drug that uh, enhances human abilities. And that's called Feridone. Once it's uh, blended with all the other things, right, it becomes Feridone. But it's a very hard min mineral to find. And it's only been found so far in one nation. And that nation is starting to get a little nervous about the power that AGS is starting to gain. And they're not as cooperative as AGS would like. So, um, you know, they're, they have built this team of supers. We've only seen two, but there's a lot more that you'll start to see in issue two. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, if you get to the, the last page of Kingsville, you start to see um, a picture um, for the issue um, number two, the cover, where you start to see some of the other supers that will be in that issue. But uh, yeah, that, that's the drug. You have to have that drug in order to have those powers. And AGS right now controls it on the outside. But internally, they don't have a program unless Kingsville is, uh, you know, right there supporting them. And they're starting to get nervous because they're getting really low on that. Ooh, I, you know, I, I really, really like that idea a ton. And, you know, at any point, AGS can just go get it right because they have Good. so are all the superheroes good are humans going to be evil or like under the evil guise of the ags yeah i mean i don't think so i think you'll start to see uh, as we get further along in the story you will i mean the reality is right kingsville does have that mineral mm -hmm. um they don't know how to utilize the mineral the same way ags does but uh you know they're a smart um people they're a um a warrior nation um, and I, I do think that they're going to figure it out eventually and you'll start to see some, uh, some, I guess you would call them good guys, right? Um, you could also possibly see some supers on the Kingsville or on the AGS side that maybe are like, I'm not sure I'm doing the right thing either. Right. So I, I really want to create kind of a, a moral conundrum, um, mm -hmm. in some of these characters where they have to decide as they start to see things, which way do I want to go? Um, because I think that's very relatable, right? And yeah. and I think in my own life, right, I have all kinds of instances where you do have to choose whether you want to take one path or the other, right? Obviously not to that extreme, but you literally had a life or death choice. I mean, I, I you out of all people like that, yeah. I think you're hitting yeah, home, yeah, man. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I we'll have to see what happens as we uh, move further along. But uh, um, you know, outside of you know the realm that we're talking about, I mean, mm -hmm. we I've had these characters in my heart for a very long time, so I have a lot of them. Um, you know, Collapse and Snapback were the two that I, I've had in my mind for a long time. You know, some of the characters, right? It's really hard 
I, I think it's actually impossible to create a character that doesn't feed off of other characters that have already been built by Marvel or DC or or other independents, right? So you want to put your own twist on them. So we have a, a few of those as well. But uh, yeah, I got a lot of characters and uh, AGS is going to continue to grow as more nations come, right? They're their agreement as a nation becomes part of the AGS family as they get a super um, to help within their nation um, do all these good things. And uh, that's what they're worried about, right? They've made this promise and nations are like, yeah, we would like to be a, a member nation, but they're like, guys, we're running out of this drug and we're going to lose the support that uh, we have been gaining because we don't have the supers to give these people. And mm -hmm. it's, it's becoming a big issue. And that's why you're starting to see a more violent side take place because they got to keep their promise if they want to gain the power that they're uh, trying to grasp. I love just how many different layers are like wrapped yeah. in this. Uh, you know, it's definitely one of those books. Uh, when you read it a second time, you start to like peel away more and more, you know. Uh, so talking about the development of Kingsville and everything, let's talk a little bit about World at War Comics uh, as, yeah. as a publisher, you know. So, uh, what, uh, what, you know, what is uh, what's that all about for you? Yeah. So, I mean, we wanted to create the book Kingsville um, and uh, I wanted to create a comic book company um, again, our first comic. Right. So we're talking down the road. But, mm -hmm. you know, I love the indie scene. Um, and I think because I'm a little bit older, um, and I have, uh, you know, been in business for a very long time, I, I wanted to create something that possibly could, could become a, a viable business in the future right now. Um, zero money being made on this. This is all passion, right? It's very difficult to make money off of comic books. Um, especially when you're just starting, right? You got to build an audience, you got to build mm -hmm. a fan base. And I realized that. So I'm in it for the long haul. Um, I took some of my savings and I put it into this company, created an LLC, which is World at War Comics, so that I could start trading comics under this uh, label. But my goal in the future is to uh, have a, have a uh, company where other creators could come um, and they could, you know, like a creator own, like an Image Comics or uh, an AWA, which I'm a huge fan of. I think they're one of the best out there doing it right now, um, where they could come and they could feel comfortable like, hey, I could build under this label, but I still mm -hmm. own all my properties, my IP. Um, and I want to be that for the India um, community because I do think right now India is where it's at. And yep. as you can see behind me, man, DC and Marvel are huge to me. They've had a huge impact on my life. But I think over the last 10 years, I've seen kind of a, a little bit of a creative void. Um, and that's not a, a shot. I, if you were to throw me on Superman right now, which is one of my favorite characters, it would be really hard to create a story that hasn't already been told for Superman. And so you really need very creative people to think outside of the box, to keep those stories going along, keep them being interesting. Um, and that's very difficult to do. It takes a special person to do that. And I'm not that person, right? Mm -hmm. um, but in indie, right, there's no rules. There's no guardrails. There's not it's like this- like the Wild Wild West almost. It, it really is, right? There's not this 80 years of canon that you have to kind of hold to as you're building the story. Um, and because of that, I think we're seeing an explosion in indie comics. And then you have like Comic Wellspring, Kablam. You got all these other companies that make it very easy to publish your own comic book mm -hmm. that you're starting to see some amazing creators out there that are being able to put their stories on paper. And indie, I think, is about to explode. It already is. But I think over the next five years, you're going to see a shift from you know some of the big um the big two and i think that's what's really hurting them right now is all these amazing creators going you know i could take my story to dc and hopefully i get you know picked up by them which is extremely almost impossible to do but if i do my ip's gone or yeah. i could keep everything in house build my own story and, and then just go to a, yeah exact crowdfund with kickstarter and indiegogo or there's a bunch of them now popping up and i could go to comic will supreme they're super easy to utilize and I can have my comic book and be successful without having to give up anything. And so you're starting to see this explosion in indie comics, which I'm super excited about. Um, and uh, I love it. I mean, I would say out of my collection, you know, at least 60% of it is indie comics. I, I try to buy more indie than I do anything else because I really want to be like you, Cody. I, I want to be there to help pump up the indie comic scene. I think the more of us that could do that, the better. Um, our uh, our little community is going to be long term, and you're giving all these opportunities to amazing creators that really wouldn't have the opportunity if that didn't happen. So I, I'm really excited to be part of this community, and I want to be a 
you know, someone that helps to build it, not tear it down. So mm -hmm. I try to keep things super positive on our, our YouTube and our Instagram and all of that. There's plenty of guys and gals out there that, you know, you know, tear down and, yeah. and there needs to be some of that, right? Because, you know, if you're not doing a good job, someone needs to tell you, I'm just not that guy. That's not my style. I'm going to pump up, pump up, pump up. It's really hard to do. And, uh, I don't, I don't know. I, just, I love keeping it positive. And I love building up this community, man. It's, I mean, it's that's great. what it's all about. That's what it's all what about. It's all like about. Yeah. I just had like pretty extensive car thing, uh, repairs, like my radiator cracked and it was 720 bucks. And I was like, dude, I'm not going to be able to back anything for a long time. And then yeah, I'm yeah. like, I like yesterday I was like, dude, but I could literally create a car, a, a coffee account, coffee, or whatever. It's like a Patreon. See if anyone, hey, you guys want to donate? Here's a way to support me. And then use that money and back. And I literally did. I set up a yeah. goal. I was like, if I get 50 bucks, I'm going to use all this money and back on my friends. And I did. And it was such an awesome feeling to yeah. find a way to overcome that's that and still, you know, support the community. Because uh, that's what it's all about yeah. is finding ways. And that, I feel like that is what indie in its like truest essence is. It's finding a way <laughs> to get your idea out there. That's and, cool. you know, a lot of times when they don't have this DC or Marvel branding, the, the creator has to yeah. work. 10 times as hard, you know, oh, yeah. to promote that book, to get that book just heard, to get that title in someone's ear. And that's what Keeping keep a Geekly is all about. You know, I don't care about a following size. I want to help you do that because like that fight, that energy, like it's, it's passion, you know, it's invigorating. It is. Absolutely. I mean, even, uh, you know, we'll do another Kickstarter here in another couple months for issue two, although we've already started it. Um, once we go to like publishing, right, that starts to get a little expensive. And then obviously, um, you know, getting those in front of the public, we have a website at world at war Um, and we want to be able to post all that up there, but, uh, we'll do the Kickstarter. And what I'd like to do is like have the goal just to cover the cost and anything above that goal, we want to reinvest in other Kickstarter and indie go-go's of indie comics. So that's my commitment to the community is reinvesting just like you, Cody. I think the more we could do that and more we could share resources, um, I think the better and stronger the community is going to be. And so I, I think that's that's kind of the path that we we could take to really help one another. And man, uh, if more people do that, I think we're just going to get stronger and stronger. Yeah, let's go. Everyone watching right there is a link to that website. Be sure to check it out. It's 100 percent free just to go there. 100 percent free to share it with your family and friends as well. Tommy, what's next Thank for you, you in uh, 2023? I, mean, I know you said you're working on issue two. Is it just this book for you or is there any other projects up your sleeve? Yeah, so I mean, it's this book um, for right now. I want to get at least two or three comics out uh, or issues, I should say, out. Um, and then I'm going to work on a collapse. Um, we'll start to build out his story because I think he has a pretty unique story, especially his upbringing. I think a lot of people can relate to his upbringing. Um, and I want to kind of delve into that. That way you kind of understand why someone is the way they are, right? A lot of times you see these people and they're just sometimes you just meet some ugly people, right? And uh, I always like to think, how do they get to that point where they're just unhappy about everything? And when you start to dig into, not everyone, like I, I don't wanna throw a broad brush out there, but mm -hmm. when you start to dig into it, a lot of people have a lot of issues that have never been resolved. And uh, you know, the older they get and the longer those things haven't been resolved, that, that anger builds up and it has to be uh, expressed in different ways and sometimes it's just unhappy people and other hand um, times like this especially when you're pumped up with this drug that's giving you superpowers sometimes it comes out in another way so i want to show that side of collapse and then i want to do the same thing with snapback and they might be like a one shot or maybe a couple mm -hmm. issues like a like three-part series or something like that i don't want to have this long time series but uh i want to do that too just to start to dive into um the characters individually that mm -hmm. way as you continue to read the story of kingsville you start to see the backgrounds of some of these characters and why they are the way they are. I think Rodrigo has an amazing background story as well um, that I want to delve into. Um, you know, I purposely made Rodrigo Hispanic. My wife is Hispanic. My kids are Hispanic. And I just don't think there's a lot of characters out there that are Hispanic. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wanted to create someone with that background. I grew up in a, a predominantly Mexican neighborhood. So I, I feel like I'm a, an adopted son. And so I feel like I could put a little story together that could really mm -hmm. show that type of an upbringing and, uh, you know, his ability to, you know, hopefully he becomes some sort of a hero in Kingsfield and helps out with all these Ooh, issues taking place. So, a little yeah, foreshadowing yeah, there, Tommy. Happened. Yeah. All yeah. Right. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm not sure yet. Yeah. I'm not sure yet, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the way it ends, right, we'll leave it that close, but the way it ends, right, there's uh, a lot of that drug going around, and we'll see where it ends up. So, Tommy, as someone, you know, who has waited a, a little bit of time before diving into breaking into comics, 
what would you say to anyone else who you know is wanting to do the same someone else who you know loves comics is just waiting for that right moment i i or you know just waiting for that kick just to propel them you know what would you say to, the, to them just to help them get going yeah i think the first thing you do is you got to put your story on paper um really put it down capture all of it i think that's extremely important it, you know it's easier said than done to say look you just need to do it it's mm -hmm. it's costly um i i would <laughs> say just roundabout right it, it's anywhere from four to ten thousand dollars to put out your comic right especially if you get a really good artist you want to pay your artist really well um you could certainly do things on the cheap but it's really dangerous mm -hmm. um there's a lot of uh you know, people that will DM you once they see that you're writing a comic saying, Hey, I'm an artist. Can I share your work with you? I would say 90% of those people you got to be no. really careful with, um, who knows where, who they really are and where that art's coming from. So, you know, I've had work with a few of those people, um, in character development. I think that's okay. Um, but you gotta be really careful. Um, also you want to be careful that you're not working with someone who's stealing someone else's art, um, mm -hmm. and saying they're one person when they're really not. Um, there's a lot of fraud out there, unfortunately, because I think a lot of people are getting into comics right now. So I, what I would say is find someone else who's done it before um dm them uh, most people are going to be really friendly and help you any mm -hmm. way that they can and they'll give you advice but uh you definitely want to put your uh, story on paper um get it out there and then start testing the waters right start digging in finding out what it costs um i'm i'm personally using comic wellspring that's why i bring them up they've been amazing to work with super easy to work with super quick turnarounds um, the back and forth are really easy. The customer service is amazing, but there's other great ones out there too. I know Kablam I was looking at for a while too. Um, and there's a much more, I mean, we could go into detail, but, uh, you know, start to look into pricing, map it out first before you dig in, because you don't mm -hmm. want to go halfway and then run out of money. Um, yeah. so take your time, um, and make sure you have a really good artist that's in it for the, the long haul, because that's really important. I got really fortunate. I found my artist on Reddit and, uh, we went back and forth for a very long time. And uh, I know he's the real deal. And uh, that's why he's on the front of the page. And he's actually working with issue two. He wants to continue working with me, but it's expensive, right? You page, you pay per page mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that you, you have the funding to do it because you don't want to go halfway and then you're done, right? And you need at least 22 pages, I would say for a comic book. Um, so you could do the math, right? If you're paying a hundred, $150 a page mm -hmm. on the low end, you could already tell how much you're going to have to invest. That's without, you know, cost of printing. And then how are you going to get it to people? uh you know building yeah, a website distribution not promotion uh <laughs> and art you know art's one of those things like it's uh when you go to a comic book shop you know psychologically when you're looking like mentally when you're looking on that rack you're looking for something flashy to catch your eyes you're looking for like something like the art to, to pull you in so art yeah. you know and it's you know this is this is hit or miss but sometimes art can be you know worth to put that extra penny into because visually, yeah. it's just going to be like an evergreen for you. That book is always going to be there selling copies for you in the future. So sometimes that bigger investment can really pay off. Well, 100%. Uh, yeah, that cover needs to pop a little bit um, because you, you got to catch someone's eye in order to be noticed. And if you're on a rack with, you know, 150, 200 other issues, especially, you know, you're trying to get up there with Image. They have some amazing artists on their team. Um, yeah, you got to have something that looks pretty good in order to catch the eye. And it's, it's a sea of comics, right? And people mm -hmm. walk into a comic store, normally they already know what they're going to pick up. They might pick up a couple indies because they, you know, maybe they want to try something new, but most of the people walk into an LCS, right? They, they already have a pull box or, you know, yeah, yeah. You're, like you're Batman, fighting, Nightwing. You're fighting a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> you're fighting a lot of things, man. But, uh, yeah, that's why you want to make connect. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Indiegogo, Kickstarter. I did an Indiegogo. Um, and it was, uh, it was a failure, man. I, I think my mom and two of my sisters were the only ones that did it. So thank you mom <laughs> for being there. <laughs> she shut has no mom. idea what Andy Google is. She has no idea what I'm doing, but she's always there for me. You know, I gotta love mom, but, uh, yeah, it was a failure, right? And it was very disappointing. And, uh, I think that is the same for a lot of people getting in your first time. No one knows who you are. They're not mm -hmm. trusting. There's a lot of fraud on Indiegogo and Kickstarter too. People say they're going to do something. They don't follow through. So you got to follow through. Um, and then I waited a little bit. Then I did a Kickstarter after I built up a following. Um, and that worked out a lot uh, better. Again, being a little bit older, having a, you know, working for a company for a long time financially, it's a little bit easier for me than probably a 20 year old trying to get into it for the first time. Um, and I have a lot of, uh, you know, support around me from marketers that are like, hey, you should do this, you should do that. So I have a few cheat codes that I was able to utilize that I would be more than happy to share. But uh, 
yeah, it, it's it's not easy, Cody. You got to be careful and uh, you got to map it out first. But it can be done. You got to you got to build up a good network of people that are willing to help you for sure. I forgot what the quote is. Something about planning leads to success, success, yeah, success yeah, yeah. but. Having a good idea of what you're doing instead of just doing it as always, you know, the the route for success, just like having a good game plan, scheduling it out, planning it out. You know, it, it doesn't hurt to, to take an extra hour or two to really plan out your future. So, Tommy, outside of creating comics, let's talk about what you're reading, you know, or, or watching. If you play any video games, like what are you playing? Yeah, I mean, I play a little bit. I, I do have a PS5. Um you know, so obviously a lot of the new Batman stuff that came out, I've been uh, playing. Gotham Knights. Um, Gotham Knights has been yeah. amazing, a lot of fun. Who is your um, favorite new, character? Uh, What's that? Who is your favorite character on Gotham Knights? Oh, Nightwing by far. I, 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 I used Nightwing. Batgirl. I loved Batgirl. Like, yeah, Batgirl's um, badass too. Because she could uh, cloak and like the, the cameras couldn't yeah, catch yeah. her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, she's pretty. I mean, they're all awesome, right? Yeah, I yeah, just yeah. love the. That's Nightwing was fan. thick. Nightwing had some cake. The developers were like, you know what? Yeah. We've seen the Nightwing run. Uh, we're we're going to follow suit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm playing a bunch of different things. I'm, I'm not a huge gamer, but I do go on probably once or twice a week and play a little bit. Um, I have four adult kids, right? So um, um, a couple still live with me. Um, they're, they play probably more than I, I do. Um, my 26 year old grew up in the heyday of Harry Potter. So we got the new Harry Potter game mm -hmm. and she's powering through that, which she really loves. Um, uh, my son-in-law, um, is a huge gamer, much bigger than me, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I, there's a lot of different things. Uh, 40 K, um, I'm, you know, uh, okay. a, uh, the shows are about to come out. So I've been going back to GameStop and buying mm -hmm. old games and uh, replaying some of those that I used to play a long time ago just to get ready because I'm I'm really happy that they're going to, Amazon's you know, going to be doing it, something with it, uh, Cavill. Doesn't it feel good to play it again? But it's like, man, this shit is ugly to look at. <laughs> <laughs> it really is, right? I mean, it's almost like going back to Super Mario Brothers on the old Nintendo, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of funny, but it's fun, man. You know, you're getting into it and like, oh, I remember this. But yeah. I'm not as big of a game. I know you're a big gamer and you've had some really good shows with some people that are like really serious. I'm not <laughs> at that level, man. Uh, I, I'm more on the comic side, like, uh, um, you know, scout comics just mm -hmm. had a 50% off sale over Easter. For Easter so yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. You see that? I'm like, Dude, that's crazy. So I Wild. got like 30, 40 comics for like 28 bucks or something. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting into like mega centurions, which is an awesome comic. If you haven't read that, um, it's about, uh, um, you know, four uh, superheroes that uh, they end up saving the world. But then after that, there wasn't a need for them. So they're all working these random jobs. And they have these powers. <laughs> it's pretty cool, man. It's a great story. But yeah, I'm, I'm digging into a lot. I spend more time, to be quite honest, um, collecting McFarlane. Um, Marvel Select Toys are the two that I really spend a lot of time. So jealous collecting. seeing they're you unboxing them, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I see your it, videos. Man. You just have, oh, like, I, I have like a little yeah. shelf. And my girl's already like, all right, you're spending a little too much. And I see your whole room. I'm like, oh, yeah. I want to be this guy. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We just got to get old and uh, start making some money and saving a little bit. I mean, it's going to happen to all of us. But uh, hey, I'm lucky. getting there. Yeah. I'm already turning 34 this year. So we're, we're starting to catch up. There you up. go, Cody. <laughs> yeah. So you know, Cody, I got a daughter that's getting close to that. But yeah, I, I just, uh, <laughs> I've been collecting for a long time and uh, I love McFarlane. I think, mm -hmm. I think what Todd McFarlane and obviously the others that started <laughs> Image, but, uh, you know, Todd, Jim Lee, um, some of those guys, what they did for indie comics, not that there wasn't indie comics before. I mean, there were some really amazing groundbreakers, but what Todd and the rest of the team over at uh, Image did um, in uh, 1992 when they broke away from Marvel and started their own thing, they really opened up a lot of doors for other creators. Um, and so whether you like uh, whatever they're doing or not, I mean, Life Field, all those guys just were amazing. Um, you got to have a respect for what they did because they opened a lot of doors for um, indie creators. And mm -hmm. uh, I think we're all standing on their shoulders. And so I, I, I love Todd McFarlane, always have, love Spawn. You know, I'm hoping that uh, movie number two is of the quality that it, it becomes pretty amazing. It's going to be more horror forward, um, which I'm pretty excited about yeah, too. Yeah. Um, Todd is 
Todd could get pretty uh, nasty in his comics too with some crazy stuff, which I love. So I'm hoping that that comes through on the movie. But yeah, I mean, that's what I'm doing. I, I'm reading a lot of stuff on the side and over the weekends and then trying to do reviews to pump people up and give them an opportunity. And then once I do a review, you know, I just, I, I reach out to those artists and those uh, writers and see if they want to come on just like you, Cody. And then we'll, we'll just have a, a normal conversation like this, how they got into comics and what that's makes awesome. them tick and some of the things they're working on. And I, I think uh, I'm not at your level, Cody, you're, you're the master at this man. So oh. I watch you I gotta step up my game, man. You, Look at you. You even got the, I mean, the whole thing, man, is awesome. Man. I know. Trust me. My, my old lady here, is not very happy about how much all this costs. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's what you have to do, right? You gotta, you gotta, you know, spend a little bit of money mm -hmm. um, to, to do a professional job, but you do a great job at it. So you're definitely my pattern when it comes to uh, doing the podcast. But uh, yeah, it's, it's awesome, man. And uh, I love it. I love talking to other creators, love talking to folks like you that have a passion for it. And uh, yeah. Hey, I think That's uh, about it. I, likewise, I, I love comics. I love talking to creators, seeing how your guys' mind ticks. The creative process is so addicting. Like I always tell myself I'm going to take a day or two off, then I end up doing two or three interviews a day. And it's like, I can't stop. Like, Give give me more indie. I'm hungry for it. But with that being said, it is time for us to wrap up. Everyone watching, right there is the link to check out the website. It's 100% free. I hope you all have a lovely Saturday. But most importantly, guys, keep it geekly.